Hey, bonjour YouTube. Have you ever worked with someone that is hard to work with? Does it affect your productivity? Have you struggled with setting boundaries in an effective way? Are you wondering what is the best way to assert your needs? Then you definitely need to watch this video. Hey, I'm Hugo and I help busy entrepreneurs and managers uh, be more productive and get back in control of their own time. And today we're starting a new series on psychology and productivity with Dr. Chelly. Hi, I'm Dr. Chelly and I'm a behavioral and wellness coach and psychotherapist under supervision. And I help people get unstuck and I help guide them to take mindful, committed actions towards their life altering goals. So Dr. Chelly, what are we going to talk about today? Well, today we're going to talk about how to assertively set your boundaries with others using effective communication skills like a desk script and that's D-E-E S-C. S -C. Yeah, D-E-E-S-C. So we're going to talk about this. If you are interested in these kind of topics, psychology and productivity, then you definitely need to subscribe to this channel. So sometimes it's challenging to work with people and even harder to express our needs in an effective way. Perhaps you're an entrepreneur and you are working with a client that is very demanding and calls and texts you at all hours of the night. That is not okay. Okay. Or if you, it's not okay, right? No, it's no. not okay. Yeah, yeah. So if you work in corporate, maybe you need to have a difficult conversation with a colleague and, or someone on your team or even your boss. You want to set boundaries with them. So I do this, we're setting boundaries. Uh, but you find this challenging for, maybe, for many possible reasons. They may kind of sort of intimidate you or you don't like confrontation or you just don't want to come across as rude. Sometimes we struggle to be assertive and we engage sometimes in other types of communication styles that really don't help uh, to meet our needs. So for example, we may be pretty passive or we may be aggressive or we may be passive aggressive. And sometimes we may use blaming language like pointing at fingers like that's Dr. Chelly's fault. Yeah. In corporate environment that that's used a lot, I've seen it a lot. Perhaps in your past, it wasn't okay to express your needs. And when you express them, then they were not really met. So when it comes to productivity, our productivity can be affected by our constant thinking of how, how the situation and also how we feel about that situation. And overthinking is not good. Overthinking is the art of creating problems where they don't exist. We may engage in unhelpful thinking styles and in psychology we call it a lot of different things like rumination, overgeneralizing, jumping to conclusions, magnification, minimization, all or nothing thinking, etc. One aspect of Dr. Brene Brown's research focuses on boundary setting and she describes compassionate, yes exactly, <laughs> compassionate boundary setting as telling someone what is okay and what is not okay. Her research also notes that uh, compassionate boundary setting allows people to ask for what they need and it helps keep them from being resentful towards others. Being resentful will not take you far. How can you be a compassionate boundary setter using your assertive communication skills? It can seem very simplistic, but a desk script is a great template to use. It works great at starting a respectful and constructive conversation. And I like the, the framework desk because it gives you really the steps. I used to call it uh, nonviolent communication. Mm, yes. So let's see how it works. So D is for describe and you're going to say when you, right? So for example, when you, uh, Hugo, mm -hmm. when you call and you text me at all hours of the night requesting that I meet your needs, I immediately. Don't actually, I don't actually do that. He I, does it's just not. An, it's just he an does example. Not. We're just using an example, right? <laughs> the next one is E, express. Mm -hmm. I feel. So I feel upset, resentful, annoyed, and frustrated. The next E is you empathize because you want to make sure that you can empathize with the person that you're speaking to. So I understand that your project is very important and that you might be under a really tight deadline. 
So basically, if we stop after these three steps, it's basically first step D, you describe the situation. Mm -hmm. So it, it's purely factual. And just the facts, not the story that we're creating about it, just yes. what happened. So as opposed to what we were talking about earlier, you saying you, mm -hmm. you, you. If I stay factual and just describe and talk about my own feelings, yes. then you can't challenge it. Because right? I can't say that your feeling is wrong. Yeah. Right? Exactly. But if, if one of us were to say you, and that comes with the little finger, mm -hmm. then the person on the opposite end will either get more aggressive yeah. or they might kind of, you know, feel like a turtle. Exactly. And the third step, the, the next E, it's uh, emphasize. Empathize. Empathize. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my French. My English. <laughs> uh, empathize is actually trying to meet the other person halfway. So it's just showing, hey, I understand right. what you can feel. Right. So still not judging, mm -hmm. it's just I describe, I talk about my own feeling and I empathize. Right, so I, I see what you're saying, I hear what you're saying, mm -hmm. right? So that was just, just uh, the checkpoint at the, in the middle of, uh, of the framework. So the next one is uh, we want to be specific. So this is where we want to say what we want or what we need. And this is the challenging part because sometimes we don't know what we want or need. So this is where we have to really check in with ourselves. So in, for this example that we're using with our client, uh, so we said, I understand that your project is important, right? So that's why they have that pressing need. Um, so I would like to set up a daily check-in at a specific time of the day to avoid the nighttime communication as that's the time that I have designated for my family. So there's work time and then there's family time. And then we want to talk about see the consequences. If, then, you know, but not consequences like an ultimatum because that isn't really helpful. So what that looks like is if you are able, if we are able to adhere to those phone calls, or you are able to adhere to those phone calls, then we will have a productive working relationship, right? Because your needs will be met and my needs and my boundaries will be respected. And if not, then I might continue to be frustrated and that may have uh, a negative impact on our working relationship. So what we did is we described with facts, we stated how we felt, mm -hmm. we empathized with the other individual, we said specifically what we want or what we need, so that is that sending, setting that boundary yeah. respectfully, and then what the consequences are of um, setting that boundary, right? And the thing here is that we don't have control over how they respond to this, right? But what we do, the powerful thing about this is that we set our boundary uh, and hopefully that will be respected. But at least I did my part in order to uh, engage in healthy communication with the other party. And we can also make a bridge with the four agreements with the, I think that's the first agreement, be impeccable with your mm -hmm. words. So if you haven't watched that video about the four agreements, excuse me, Dr. Chetty, because it's gonna be right here, popping up right here. Click on the link if you wanna see the video on the four agreements. Yes, you need to be impeccable with your words. So that it really always facilitate that exercise. What do you think, guys? Is that something that you might wanna try with someone? And also, yeah, <laughs> and let us know about a situation where you've been, uh, where you've been recently, and you wish you had this desk framework to help you communicate effectively. Dr. Shelley, how can people find you? Uh, so you can find me online. So you can find me on my website called ganasandgo.com, and I'm also on Instagram and Facebook at the same handle at ganasandgo. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to this channel for more content like this. I think we're gonna bring back Dr. Shelley because she has so many insights on the psychology and because we're starting this series with her. And uh, so yeah, subscribe and uh, don't forget to uh, ring the bell in order to be notified every week for new content. Merci, au revoir. Hasta luego. Boom! <laughs> nice. Okay. No, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs>